Wow, this is um, <laughs> phenomenal. Um, thank you very much, Rianne. That was a wonderful introduction. And I, I think you did a fantastic job of introducing just how interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary data science is. Uh, dear colleagues and friends, welcome. What I would like to talk to you today is this enormous transformation that is occurring in society. It's no longer the companies that are drawing oil from the ground that are the most valuable ones. It is the ones that are focused on computing and data. These companies start rather innocuously. They start simply in garages in the Silicon Valley. They start with com computers and with data and with an idea. It is a transformative industry. Just this week, Amazon, who has built this monstrous marketplace, a virtual marketplace to buy and sell goods, has decided to become physical, as many of the other companies has as well. Google has introduced devices. Amazon has also introduced devices, the Alexa, into your homes. And they are moving into the physical. What does this mean? What kind of transformative power can we expect? In this announcement just on Monday, they have opened up a new store called Amazon Go. And the idea is that you walk into the store, take what you want, and leave. Now, you would, might do that uh, and get in trouble, but in this store, you can do it, and it's perfectly fine. The way it works, of course, is you take your mobile phone, you scan in, they recognize you, and you take the items off the shelf, and a virtual um, grocery cart is being filled up, right? And you can take those items, off, and you can put them back, and it recognizes it. And then, when you're done, you simply walk out. So no checkout lines. Nobody to stand behind and wait as they count their pennies in order to pay. It's completely different, and it's already here. Now, of course, you need a mobile phone that is a critical element of this new technology. Not everybody has this mobile phone. Not everywhere, but largely. And it is transformative. But how is it done? How are they accomplishing this? Well, they do it in their marketing campaign. They say sensor fusion, right? They are following you throughout the store. And they are monitoring you and taking video of you. And they're using uh, methods in computer science to recognize the different objects, yourself and the items on the shelf. And they integrate all of this data through so-called deep learning algorithms, right? These are really methods to integrate large amounts of signals and make decisions about something of interest, such as whether you took those items. It's the same kind of technology that we see in self-driving cars. Lots of sensors around the car, and the car makes decisions about whether to stay on the road or to stop, to turn right, and so on. These are truly transformative technologies. And these are exactly the kinds of things that we're now looking to apply in medicine, in the life sciences, in the social sciences, in the humanities, in business, and economics, and so on. These are commonly used now emerging technologies that will apply in all the different fields. Now, for medicine, of course, we, we look forward to not only uh, uh, asking the patient about their experiences and their lifestyle and so on, but really incorporating molecular information, um, information about uh, general uh, disease and well-being, uh, and other kinds of information together. And this creates vast amounts of data about individuals, and these so-called machine learning algorithms ply through it and make sense of it. They categorize people and ask, who are you much like? And what should we recommend for you, given that you're like other people? And that's a very different tact, and it's tailored for the individual. And on the science side, we can start examining new therapeutic targets, new ways to address uh, a human health and disease. So, artificial intelligence is the buzzword. It's the thing that we keep hearing over and over again. And it certainly has a lot of promise, but it's now maturing in a way that we haven't seen before. It's finding its way in day-to-day -day applications. And that's an exciting development. And it promises a kind of automation. Well, we're used to automation. We've seen automation on the factory line of manual labor. But now, it's also about services, things that we thought we were so special in doing, computers may be able to do too. So what's the problem? That all sounds nice, doesn't it? Well, in September, there was this uh, press release that I saw. Deutsche Bank CEO announced that bankers and accountants might not be safe from automation, that AI could be replacing them. 
Now, could you imagine the feeling of the people in that company sitting at that retreat saying their leader is telling them that they may be redundant in a few years? That all of that training, all that education that they obtained at the, at the university may no longer be applicable. What will they do? These are big questions for society, and we have no answers for them. And what about us as a university, as a place where education occurs? Will AI come to dominate it? Will we be made redundant and unneeded? Well, there's certainly a place for it, but what is that? And so we have to ask the question, what is the relationship between the technology that we're bringing about, that our young innovators are creating and putting into the marketplace, and the human part of it? So, clearly, data science enables us to make sense of incredible amounts of data that we individual people cannot do. We can hold at most five or six different variables to make decisions, but computers could take thousands, tens of thousands. They can see patterns that we simply cannot make sense of. There's an enormous opportunity in using computers, and it will affect literally everything that we do. It already is. It doesn't respect disciplinary boundaries, and we must embrace this development and prepare for it. And that is exactly why we have established this new Institute of Data Science. The mission of the Institute is to foster a collaborative environment for multidisciplinary data science research, interdisciplinary training, and youth innovation. And that really means bringing together the people who are technically competent, as well as those that study the social, legal, and ethical aspects of these technologies, and to bring them at the start of the conversation, not after they've been introduced. We need laws and policies to guide our society and to do it together. And this is what we hope to do. So we hope to tackle key scientific, technical, social, legal, ethical issues that advance our understanding and strengthen our communities in the face of these developments. Rianne uh, kindly mentioned the FAIR concept. And so FAIR stands for Findable, Accessible, Interoperable, Reusable. And it's important because all of these machine learning, all this data science depends on the data. And we have to make sure that people who create value, this valuable resource, can also make it available for others to reuse in ways that could not have been foreseen at the time they were collected. So we're creating a global engagement strategy so that people can participate in and, and uh, uh, build on the developments of others. And so, as academics, we also want to rethink how are we doing our research? How do we make our content available for others to reuse? The traditional way is collect some data, do an analysis, and publish your paper. Done. Count up your papers, get your tenure, get your promotion, and you're good to go. But I think we think that data that you collect during the course of your studies is this enormously valuable resource that can be used for much more than just your studies. It could be used to reproduce your work and make sure we have confidence about the methods that you use. It could be used to validate other people's work. And it could be used to generate new hypotheses. And this is, frankly, the kind of work that the Institute of Data Science is doing. So what do we need to achieve this? We need investments in data science. We need methods that will discover and validate knowledge about the world. We need shared infrastructure to analyze these data in a reproducible way. One of our honorary doctorates, um, Carol Goebel, has created social infrastructure for doing just this. We also need our communities to work together to tackle these hard problems that we face as a society and to examine the role of technology and society. And we need to do so in a responsible manner. Our other honorary doctorate, has done, Lucy Touchman, has done exactly this. And this is why we recognize them. So, we are building a data science community, something that, we have been, that has been in the works at Maastricht University for 25 years. And yesterday, we launched a first attempt to bring the community together with these different ideas and thoughts about data science. And it was a successful and incredible event. We are going through the university and listening to our colleagues and trying to hear what their concerns are, what they hope to achieve, how they want to propel their own fields forward. We want to see them share their research in our seminar series to discuss the recent developments that are published in papers of our esteemed colleagues worldwide and to come together to share, uh, and, uh, share ideas and to create new innovative strategies for our communities and for the world. So we welcome you 
to think about your role of technology in society, to initiate interfaculty research collaborations through the institute, to couple research data management with discovery, and to strengthen the data science skills of our students and our staff alike. And with that, I leave you with this thought, that data science is an empowering technology, but one that we must think together as a society as to how to guide it toward the proper outcomes that we all hope for. Thank you very much.